Well, good morning, church. Why don't you stand up on your feet? Let's begin to give God the glory this morning because he's worthy. Heaven and earth will sing 
So I'll sing, yes, Lord, sing So I'll cry 
today we're celebrating Palm Sunday. I can just picture the streets filled and them crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. He was their hope. But more than that today, he is our hope. And we can mightily declare the name of Jesus over everything we're carrying, over every circumstance. Jesus is above it all. And today we begin a week that is just reflective and contemplative, but I can't think of a better thing to do than to declare his faithfulness, who our God is in the middle of the storm, in the middle of what's taking place, that Jesus is above it all. So we're just gonna take some more time today to declare his name, to declare who he is today. Let's just open our hearts. Father, we commit this time to you. Jesus, come. Come and save us, we pray. We need you, God. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet. My Savior on that cursed tree. His body bound and drenched in tears. They laid him down in Joseph's tomb. The entrance sealed by heavy stone. Messiah still and all alone. And oh, praise the name of the Lord our God. Oh, praise His name forevermore. For endless days we will see.
to worship the Lord. What a joy it is as we pour out our praise. He refreshes us in return. He makes us whole. He makes us new because he is good and everything that comes from him is good. He is the father of everything that is good for us. We're gonna honor him today. As we celebrate Palm Sunday, the beginning of Passion Week, remembering uh, Jesus giving his life for us, we're gonna receive communion today. And if you did not get one of these packets on your way in and would like to participate with us, uh, lift up a hand. We've got some ushers that would love to serve you. You don't need to be a part of Eastridge Church in order to participate with us. The only requirement for uh, remembering this symbol and participating is that you call on Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And if that is true for you, we invite you to participate. And if it's not true for you, we invite you to do that today, to call on him. He's here. He's drawing you. He's waiting for you to say yes to him. Jesus asked us to do this in remembrance of him, as a remembrance of the covenant that he's established in us. In 1 Corinthians 11, it says, For I received from the Lord what I also pa passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Go ahead, peel back that top cellophane layer and take the bread out. Let's hold it in our hands as we pray together. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much that you did not hold on to your place in heaven, but you came willingly to earth. You were born as a man, a baby, a servant of many, a servant of all, Lord, to, to show us what it means to love like you do, to serve, to give, to put ourselves below others, not taking the top spot. We thank you so much that you modeled that even as King of Kings and Lord above all. So as your humble servants today, we say thank you for your body broken for us. Let's take the bread together. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread or drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's remove that next layer and hold the cup in our hands. And Jesus, that's what we do right now. We proclaim your death, the new covenant that comes from your blood, that because of your shed blood, we can have forgiveness of our sin, which there is no way we could ever get rid of on our own. But Lord, through the miracle of your sacrifice, through your blood, it is taken away in an instant. And we are eternally grateful. And we wait for the day that you return to establish your kingdom in full. Let's receive the cup together. Church, let's just enter back into worship. Let's keep lifting up his name. Keep honoring him. Show him your love. Show him your thanks. Let's worship together. to you everything that worries us, that causes us anxiety or fear. We lay it down at your feet right now. Lord, you are our shepherd 
And we proclaim we will not be in want. You lead us by quiet waters. You lead us to uh, quiet streams. You restore our soul, our soul. Lord, we thank you so much for your love and your care for us. And we lay down all of our needs, all of our burdens at your feet, loving Heavenly Father. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God is good. It is a pleasure and a joy to worship with you. Thank you for worshiping with us. If you don't know what to do with that little uh, communion packet, there are little baggies in the chair backs in front of you, and you can kind of share them among your row, which is a great opportunity to meet somebody while you're doing that and uh, putting that in the little baggie. So take a little a minute right now, shake a couple of hands, meet somebody new before you're seated today. This Easter at Eastridge, we want you to egg your neighbor. Hey. That's not what we meant. What we meant was we want you to grab one of these egg invitation tools. Inside, you'll find an invitation card and some special treats that you can give to a neighbor, a friend, a family member, or coworker to invite them to Easter weekend at Eastridge. So egg your neighbor. Don't egg your neighbor. Yes, indeed. Hopefully a few of you have already egged your neighbors since you got to pick up some last week and are uh, following the instructions of the video. But we are so glad uh, that you've decided to join us here for this Palm Sunday celebration. Welcome to church, everybody. Uh, we got two quick things we want to make sure that you are uh, aware of before you leave the building today to make a connection here at Eastridge. And we do this every single week, but it does not lose its significance. Check in with us. All the information that we're going to share uh, is available there as well uh, as an opportunity for you to submit a prayer request, things that maybe we can celebrate with you about uh, and connect with you about. And then on your way out today at the Pastors Connect, we'd love to meet you, shake a hand, pray with you, answer any questions you might have. That is true. And this week, we have the incredible opportunity to put one of our core values in place, yes. and that is to help people discover Jesus. Yes. What a better week than this week. Yeah. So everything for Easter begins essentially today with today, Palm Sunday. Yes. <laughs> but on Friday night, we have an incredible Good Friday service. Yeah. Starts at 7 p.m. You're going to want to come early, get a great seat. And then um, the next day is no shortage of fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's, we have egg hunts. We have three egg hunts, nine. 11 and 1 and then easter starts sunday night saturday night. Sa i'm sorry saturday <laughs> night that's right saturday night at 5 easter starts we have our service at 5 p.m and then the same service on sunday at 9 and 11. so the eggs will be in the atrium yeah. you can invite your friends and neighbors to those but we don't want you to miss Easter weekend so we can help our community discover Jesus. Yeah, we want to help people, as Carrie uh, shared, to discover Jesus. And one of the ways that we do that uh, is to invite them to join us for all these things that we're talking about right now. And then we want people and families together to find their purpose together. And one of the best ways to do that uh, is to serve together, to put the jersey on, to join the team. And this incredible outreach event does not happen uh, without the help of the people of Eastridge. So next Saturday uh, is our egg hunts here and in West Seattle. And there's something like 75,000 eggs between the two campuses. A lot of eggs. <laughs> Thousands of people come through uh, to do that. And so we would love to invite you to serve. You can either scan the QR code or stop by the table in the lobby. And I think we only need like 14 slots 14 filled. more slots. So we are nearing the finish line. So I think we can knock that out right here in the 9 oh, o'clock service. Let's do it. Let's do it. These are the most committed people. They're here at the early service. So uh, go ahead, scan the QR code, and join us next Saturday for our egg hunts. And finally, if you want to take the next step here at East Ridge, joining the family, becoming a member, we have an opportunity for you to do that this Wednesday. And if you'd like, you can just join us here on Wednesday night, or if you want some more information, you can email info at eastridgetoday.com. That's right. And another way to grow in community begins this week. If you haven't done Alpha, maybe faith is new to you, or you have a friend, 
that ha- is new to faith, join us this Wednesday. Yeah. There's dinner at 615 and then Alpha follows it. It's an incredible thing. If you have not been a part, this is your week. Yeah. Now is the this time. Is a great week. And then after spring break, we're also starting men's and women's Bible study, financial peace, and our community groups. So you don't want to miss out on growing in community here at Eastridge. Yes, and of course, we want to do the same thing that we do every week. Invite you to link your faith together with us as we uh, turn our hearts toward generosity. So when don't you turn your attention towards the screens? Welcome to Eastridge Church. Whether you're joining us in the room or online, we're so glad you're here. If you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook, we encourage you to join our online experience at eastridgetoday.com. There you can chat with a host, receive prayer, or easily give online with the click of a button. You can even set up recurring giving so you never miss out on the opportunity to bless what God is doing through Eastridge Church. If you're in the room, you can give through the Eastridge app at eastridgetoday.com slash give or the buckets in the back. We encourage you to stay up to date with everything that's going on at Eastridge at eastridgetoday.com or social media. And once again, thanks for joining us. Well, good morning again, everybody. And uh, we, again, just want to thank you for taking time out of your weekend to join us here at Eastridge Church. It really is a special day as we kick off uh, this Passion Week of Jesus. And I get the great privilege, uh, before you hear an awesome message from Pastor Steve this morning, uh, to lead us in giving of our tithes and our offerings. And if you're a part of our Eastridge family for any amount of time, you know we do this every single week. Because it's a big part of our culture and DNA here as a church. We want to follow the model and the heart of Jesus to give generously so others could know the hope that is found in the gospel. And so today, like you just saw in the video, you can participate in a lot of ways. You can give at eastridgetoday.com on our mobile app. You can even take advantage of that envelope that's in the chair back, uh, hopefully nearby, and you can just drop it in a bucket as you walk out the door today. But you know what's so interesting about this command, and that's what it is, it is a command that God gives us, not a recommendation, not a good idea. It's a command that God gives us to trust him in giving in our tithes and in our offerings. Why? Is it because God needs us to give? No, God doesn't need us to give. You know who needs to give? I need to give. The benefit in giving isn't a benefit to God, it's a benefit to me. Because when I give, it changes me. It transforms me. It actually draws me closer to God. Check out what Jesus taught us in Matthew chapter six. You may have heard this section of text before. It's very famous, but Jesus says this, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and vermin destroy and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moths and vermin do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. And watch this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Did you notice the order of that statement? It doesn't say where your heart will be, there your treasure will be also. It says where your treasure is, your heart follows. Did you know when we walk in obedience to give to the Lord our tithes and our offerings, not only do we build his kingdom, not only here, but around the world through the missions and missionaries we give to, but you know what happens? Your heart moves. You change. We actually grow closer to God. His priorities, what? They become our priorities. His wants and desires, what happens? They become our wants and desires. Why? Because the heart follows where our treasure is. And so I just want to encourage you, the command we have in scripture to give is not this compulsory thing that God put on us to be heavy and ill-laden. No, he gave us the command to give so it would be a benefit to us, that it really would draw us closer to him and help us become the people he's created us to be. And I got to tell you, when you give here at Eastridge Church, your giving really is making a tangible difference in the world. That's why we have one of our values is to change the world. And as we give, You're changing our city, you're changing our region, and you're making an impact around the globe through the people we support through your weekly giving. So I'm gonna pray, and we wanna thank you for your generosity because you really are an amazing, generous church, and I just believe that as we walk in this obedient step that God's gonna continue to move in your life in some really powerful ways. So would you pray with me today? Jesus, we're so grateful for the privilege we have of partnering with you. God, it truly is a partnership as we trust you, not only with our resources, but God, we walk in obedience to the command that you have given us to tithe and to give. And Lord, I thank you, not only that it makes a difference in sharing the gospel, but Lord, I thank you that it changes us. I thank you that it transforms our heart, that it does a deep work in our life. 
And God, I pray that we would be people who not only walk in obedience, but who are able to walk in the full blessing of what God has to offer us through this uh, act of obedience. And so God, we thank you for this privilege today. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen, amen. Come on, can we give it up for Pastor Steve as he comes to bring the word today? Good morning, everybody. Thank you, Pastor Josh. So great to see you today. Thank you for being here today in the house of the Lord. And this is an exciting time. We, we did have a, a great opportunity last weekend to be with our family. How many believe that... Uh, we need to live up to our own coaching and preaching. How many believe that? And uh, so we love it when you bring your families and you dedicate your children to the Lord. In this case, it was our daughter Janelle and her husband dedicating their little boy Asher to the Lord. So we had a chance to be there, celebrate with them, lay hands on that little boy, and uh, pray for God's blessing. Listen, it makes a difference But we commit our, our families, we commit our parenting and we commit our children to the name of the Lord. So thank you for praying for us and being supportive and, and just uh, having a part of, of what God is doing in our lives as well as in your life. It's a, a great privilege. And uh, so today I'm really fired up. I'm excited to preach to you today on Palm Sunday and uh, really what this whole week unfolds for us. And following just on the heels of, of Pastor Josh talking about the opportunity today to give, um, I want to do a couple things. One, I kind of want to apologize to you because during the aspect of our inspire time, I think my communication wasn't as good as it could have been. And because last year we did something out of the ordinary, you know, year to year, we do a one year, you know, opportunity. And, uh, you know, you have opportunity to say, hey, this is what's on my heart for this year. Last year, we, we changed it. And we said, hey, there, we're going to do this in a way if you would like to, you could, you could just take a two-year step. Just let us know what you want to do over the, the next two years. So I am sorry for any confusion that I left with you because uh, we're giving you this opportunity to say what you feel God wants you to do this year. So if you would like to, you know, just fill out a card. If you already said last year, hey, we want to do for two years. If you just want to let me know, that's okay. I'd love to hear from you. And, uh, and I'm going to work on trying to be a, a little more clear. I think this is... Um, one of those moments, I think over the years we've done pretty good, but on this one, I kind of fumbled the ball a little bit. So uh, I apologize for that because the last thing I want to do is confuse you. <laughs> I, want to, I want to be able to, you know, walk with, does that make sense to you today? And uh, so there's cards at the, at the back. And here's, here's what we have done. Uh, over at this, um, where we stand right now, is we have received uh, between cash and a, and a gift that is pending about $950,000. Our goal is to raise $3.8 million, if you're brand new to us. We're, we're in a campaign to become totally debt-free. And uh, we have made some unbelievable progress the last year and a half or so. And so we're three point eight away. So we have um, about $950,000 that is, is in, that, in that category, and then about another 750 that is in this area of the pledge. And now that's where, because of my mistake, it got a little foggy. It might be that you did a two-year pledge, and so we may be further along than it even appears. So my apologies. But how many know, one way or the other, we're trusting God. <laughs> and we're looking for God to take care of this and meet this need this year and uh, I just thank you for standing with me and standing with this church on this great quest. So, are we good now? Are we somewhat clear? <laughs> I hope it's a little bit clearer than mud. But uh, anyhow, would you, would you just join me and, and stand with me right now? And I'd like to pray as we begin to talk about this incredible week. I'm going to mention it in this sermon, but this is what's amazing to me. When you look at the week of Christ's passion, starting here with what we know as Palm Sunday, and you know next Sunday is Easter Sunday. So I want to make sure when you go out the door, every one of you have touch cards and opportunities because this week, you have to understand this, this next uh, weekend with Friday being good, good Friday, we're going to have an incredible presentation here. You have friends who will not come to any other service, but they will come to Good Friday. There are other friends that will come. Easter is the most opportune moment on the entire 365 days. So let me ask you, and let me encourage you with this. Don't miss the greatest moment of opportunity. Amen? So guys, you can stick them in your pockets, ladies' pockets, purses, whatever works for you. But we've got them at the desk and, and, the, and the welcome center. Let's go all out this week 
Pray and believe. Here's the other aspect. I'm going to be posting for you and every day what happens during this Passion Week. And I would love for you to take the time this week to dig in deep with the Lord. In fact, it's stunning when you look at the life of Jesus and what we have been taught in the Scriptures about Jesus, how much of what we know about Jesus comes into the Scripture in the last week of his life before his crucifixion and resurrection. I mean, it's, isn't that amazing? So you can write this down when, you, when you're seated in a moment, but uh, you can take a journey this week. The easiest way to do it is from Matthew 21 to Matthew 27, and, and just take this journey of these next few days. And I will post it every day, and I encourage you to get in, read the Scripture, pray. I would even encourage you to maybe take even a day on this journey and fast and pray before the Lord. Or maybe even one meal during the entire week. Just draw your heart towards God. What a moment this is to draw near to God and open our hearts to receive what he has for us. Amen? How many are hungry for a fresh anointing? I mean, are you hungry for a greater work of God in your life? Well, this is it. This is it. It's happening in the world, and we should allow it to happen. We should welcome the presence of God to touch us. So let's pray about it right now. Lord, I thank you for this incredible family. And I pray over each and every person, some here for the very first time today. Lord, I pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit and even our lives, that they would feel loved and received and welcomed. Lord, I pray that today you would meet people in their lives in a very special way. That, Lord, you would reveal your love, your power, your grace, your mercy, all these things, Lord. Today, have your way in our lives. And we ask this together in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. You can be seated today. All right. As we just begin, I want to give a big shout out to West Seattle. Can you join me today? West Seattle, we're so glad to be able to share this moment with you as well as all of you. It's just growing every single week. How many people are worshiping with us online all over the place, different countries. So we welcome everybody who's online as well. A little interaction today. Uh, you can give me a little feedback on this, but how many of you have a friend, a long-term friend? The older you are, it's easier to have a long-term friend, but how many of you have a long-term friend that you shared some kind of crazy moment with and Every time you get together, one way or another, there's a story that always comes to the surface. Let me see your hands. Anybody like that with your friends? It doesn't, yeah, look at so many people lifting their hands. It doesn't matter, you know, when, where, or how you get together. Some way in the midst of it, that story is going to rise to the surface. Cheryl and I had a, a couple of friends of ours for a long time that came to visit us just a couple of weeks ago. And we go way back and, uh, to the times of being youth pastors, and, and uh, Cheryl and I were traveling and preaching around the country. And he was a youth pastor down in Southern California, and we went and did a camp with him. And after that week of camp, we had a day and before we had to leave town, and they were like, hey, you know, we've been doing all this stuff with these students on the beach. How about if we just take half a day and go to the beach ourselves? So we're like, sure, let's do that. So we went to Huntington Beach. And how many know it's always a good idea to go to Huntington Beach? And, and so there we were on the beach, and, and uh, we, you know, had our blanket out and all that kind of stuff. And we decided to grab our boogie boards and to go out into the surf. And there was a tropical storm moving up from Mexico. So there were these big ocean rollers coming in. And so my friend and I got out there, and we started making our way you know, like halfway, maybe a little bit further than halfway on the big long pier. And all of a sudden, we started running, just getting crushed. Anybody ever been crushed by these waves? And it was just, you know, unbelievable because all of a sudden, boom, they just took us and just drove us basically all the way down to the bottom. You know, just, you're just bouncing on the bottom. And then the next thing is on your mind is survival. And that is, how do I get to the top? And you're doing everything you can to fight your way to the top. And you get just to where the water breaks. I, I'll never forget this. And I take a look, and all I see is the white crest, the, the breaking water of the next wave. And I had just enough time to go and Boom, there you go again, just getting dragged down on the bottom. And then you're again, just fighting your way to the top. And there you just poke your head out and you go, oh my gosh, not again. And just one little breath and poof, 
all the way down to the bottom. And I'll tell you what, about the fourth or fifth time, there's another thought that crosses your mind. This is how people drown. I'm going to drown because you just think like there is no way I can get out of this. Well, anyhow, the Lord was good to Greg and I, and we both survived and we came crawling out. How many know you've been through something when you get out of the surf and you've got sand rolling out of your ears and your shorts? How many know that you've been through a little something when that's going on? And we're looking at each other and we're just like, wow. And, and we're both just panting for air and we were looking at each other and we're just like, you know what? We almost drowned. And then we look around and we realize there's not a surfer in the water there's not a boogie boarder in the water. There's nobody attempting to swim. There was just two Northwest boys who were doing something they should have known better to do. We put ourselves, anybody here ever put yourself in a crazy place? And you don't realize how crazy it is until things get crazy. And then it's pretty crazy. But today I tell you that little story because it's kind of how life feels right now, isn't it? So many of us in, this, in the situation where we are as a, as a people and all the things that we've been going through, we feel like we just barely can catch a break. Isn't that right? You just feel like there's just waves. Just when you think, hey, we went through that. We got through that. We survived that. And all of a sudden, it's just like, boom, you just barely get your head above water. Enough time to take a quick breath and boom, it hits you all over again. You know, this last week, we just wanted to take a few days with our family. And I, I kind of thought, you know, I'm, I'm always in the news. I think as a pastor and a leader, you need to be aware of what's going on. You need to understand what's going on. And the last few days, I thought to myself, you know, I'm just going to take a break from the news for a few days. And all of a sudden, one of those reports caught up with me. And I was like, oh, my gosh. I mean, we're down in the South, first of all. And, there, you know, it comes up, hey, there's warnings of this and that. And you heard about the tornadoes that swept through the South. And, and the devastation in Mississippi and different states. I mean, it's just amazing. And then we hear just the unbelievable tragedy of what happened in Nashville with the shooting at this Christian school. These little kids, nine years old, being shot and all that came out of that. Pastor's little girl being murdered in the midst of the other kids. And I mean, it's just grief. How many of you just felt that grief that just came when you heard these things? And, and then, you know, it's just like one thing after another. And then, you know, you hear the other things that, you know, we've had people telling us the last few years, you know what, with climate change, if we don't change everything in the next 10 years, the planet's going to die. And, and so you're just walking around going, the planet's going to die. And then we have Elon Musk and 2,000 tech people telling us, you know, look, we've got to do something. How many of you have ever heard of tech companies asking for the government to put regulations on? I mean, am I the only one here today? I mean, this is, this is crazy stuff. And they're saying, you know what, we, we have concerns about AI. We have concerns about how the machines could, could get ahead of us, and we don't know what's going to happen. And I'm just looking at this, and I'm thinking, okay, great. We're going to die of climate change. We're going to die of AI. We're going to have robots taking over the world. We've got, I mean, politics coming back. I mean, I was just thinking, wow, wouldn't it be great if we just... Maybe we need longer, uh, whatever. But, you know, here we are again, going to dive right in. Do you feel this way? You just bear, got your head up, and here it comes again. And you can, you know, I've been praying about this, and I felt like the Lord just said, you need to speak to the people who feel like they're fatigued, who feel like they're depleted, who wonder if they can make it through another wave of this. And I want you to know today, when we talk about Palm Sunday, there should be something that strikes us in our hearts to realize this. Let me even just tell you one other thing. I mean, I have friends and people who send me stuff all the time. One of my friends, I didn't even open it up yet. I just saw the headline. But he sent me a Newsweek article. And it said, the devil's getting hotter than hell in our popular culture. And you see it on, the, on these different awards nights and all of this stuff. Hey, I just want to say something to you, church. God has not gotten off the throne. He has not handed it over to anybody else. Your God is still in control. Even though it may seem like there's wave after wave of confusion and uncertainty and things that are declining, unraveling, and all these things around us, I want to bring you to Palm Sunday. And I want you to see, I want you to be reminded today, if you're weary, if you're disappointed, if you're fatigued, if you're even discouraged, if you're battling for your life, I want you to know that your God has you in the palm of his hand. He's not released you. you don't, you're not at the whims of the 
enemy. You belong to a living God. And I want you to see today that your God is a God who fulfills his word. Your God is a God who will fulfill his word in the great things and even in the small things. In other words, you can bank on the Lord to be your rock, your fortress, to be the place of strength in your life. Is there an amen today in the house? And today, I just want you to know, God wants to bring, instead of waves of discouragement and waves of despair and fears, God wants to bring waves of healing and waves of mercy and waves of grace, waves of hope to lift you, to strengthen you, and to use you. Boy, what a time for you to experience a fresh touch yourself in this week of the passion that you will be able to speak and encourage someone else. Listen, I'll tell you what, your friends, you may not realize it, but under the waterline, your friends and relatives are thinking about things that they haven't thought about in a long time. You know, they're, they're being told all these things. And listen, I got to just say this to you. It's amazing how even secular people who don't fully understand spiritual things have just enough of it to speak of things. You know, they'll talk about, you know, like Amazon, when you wave your hand and, and you go, you know, able to, to buy something in a store and just walk out by the waving of your hand. I was reading an article the other day talking about cell phones, that in just the next few years, you're not going to have to carry a cell phone anymore. There'll be enough of the technology embedded in our bodies that we'll be able just to operate without, any, talk about hands-free, right? But the Bible is so powerful that it says there's a day coming where you won't be able to buy or sell without the mark of the beast. And all of a sudden, with everything that's been happening these last few years, people are beginning to realize, secular people even talk about, you know, I wonder if this has something to do with that mark of the beast. The aspect, I'm a, you know, I'm a steward of the earth. I believe we need to be wise and we need to do everything we can to be smart and honoring to God and his planet. And, you know, when you look at the end times and you, you hear about the days of tribulation, the Bible talks about the seas, you know, having incredible devastation. I mean, it's, it's something that comes. But here's what I want you to see, that when we can see all of these things that we can now get a grip on, we can, we can kind of see where things may, uh, you know, where, what they would may, uh, go to and how they may be interpreted. I want you to know that we believe in what is known as a pre-tribulation rapture. What does that mean? That there, God, the Bible says God has not appointed his, his people to suffer wrath. The days of tribulation are going to be days of wrath upon the earth. And who believes in Jesus Christ, that he is going to come and capture his church into the heavens before that wave of destruction comes. So if you can see it on the horizon, I want you to think about something. How close should we be living to God with the expectation? Because here's the thing. There are prophecies yet to be fulfilled about the days of tribulation. There is not one prophecy left to be fulfilled that deals with the coming of Jesus in the rapture of his people. It could happen before this sermon's over. Are you living like it could happen before this sermon is over? Have you thought about it like it could happen before this sermon is over? I think sometimes we just get caught up in, in the waves and, and, and the destructions and all the things around us. And it's so easy to get dragged into fears and anxieties and discouragement. But listen, what the Bible teaches us is we should turn our eyes toward God. And we should begin to see that we serve a God who's going to fulfill his word. So let's dive into that word. If you have your Bibles, I want to take you today to what we know as the description of, of Jesus coming in the city of Jerusalem on Palm Sunday. And it's today... The, we're going to take a look at it through the book of, of Luke. So I'd like you to turn with me to Luke chapter 19, and let's take a look at this. Anybody still with me today? Are you following what I'm saying? Are you tracking with where I'm going today? To be encouraged, to be strengthened, to realize we serve a God who is a God of his word, and his word will be fulfilled great and small. And that should be the greatest encouragement to us. Here we go. In, in Luke chapter 19, it says this. After Jesus had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. And as he approached, um, 
Bethpage and Bethany at the hill called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there which has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Tell him the Lord needs it. Those who were sent went and found it just as he told them. And as they were untying the colt, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? Wouldn't you love to have seen that? I mean, this was like a carjacking, right? They're coming and, and they're taking the colt. And they're like, hey, what, dude, what are you doing with my colt? And they gave the answer Jesus told them to give. The Lord needs it. You know, how many know God had to prep that moment so the people would go, oh, the Lord needs it. Go right ahead. You know, untie that baby and make it, you know take your way. And, but that's exactly what happens. The Lord needs it. And those, um, it says, um, they brought it to Jesus through their cloaks on the colt and put Jesus on it. And as they went along, people spread their cloaks on the road. And when they came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles that they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And as they approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it. And he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and will encircle and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground and you and your children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Wow, there is so much to unpack in this passage. You know, every time I read this story, my mind immediately gets transported to Mount Scopus in Jerusalem. And Mount Scopus is like a high point that overlooks. And and what happens with Mount Scopus is as you overlook the city of of Jerusalem and you see the Temple Mount. Today, no longer is there a temple there, but now there's the Dome of the Rock, the very famous um, Islamic mosque that you've seen. So here you are on Mount Scopus looking down over the city of Jerusalem and you see this place. And there's a literal road, and many of you have gone down this road with us. It's called the Palm Sunday Road. It is the road that Jesus came in to the city of Jerusalem. I mean, it's an amazing thing to walk down that road, and you come down to the Garden of Gethsemane, and you come into the Kidron Valley, and you're just a very short distance from the temple. And the Bible talks about how Jesus came down that road, and he came riding on this little colt. And this cult is absolutely amazing. This is why I say to you, you need to have confidence. I need to have confidence that God is a God of details. He is a God who's in control. He, he knows what he's doing, how he's doing it. We may not always understand it, but God knows what he's doing. Somebody, you need to hear that today. We may not understand it, but God knows what he's doing. And in the midst of that, it's a fulfillment of a prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, where the prophet talks about the coming of the king of Israel. And we're not talking about King David. We're not talking about Solomon. What we're talking here is prophetically the Messiah, the one that's going to come in the fulfillment of God's word. And Zechariah talks about how this great Messiah, this great king, is going to come ri- gently riding on the back of a colt. It's amazing. Looks like a small, minute little detail. But what happens is when Jesus comes in riding on that colt, there's something that begins to break loose in the city of Jerusalem. People all over. You know, today we're talking about a stirring of the Holy Spirit. It's been touching campuses around our country. I hope that God will stir it to an even greater place. But you know, there's something about understanding that God is moving and you don't want to miss, come on somebody, you don't want to miss the day of God's visitation in your life. When there's a stirring, we ought to be seeking God anytime, but when there's a stirring, we have people of faith, we should be moving towards it with great faith and expectation and be a part of stirring what God is doing in our midst. 
So here's what happens. They put their cloaks over the, the little colt, and Jesus gets on this colt, and he begins to ride into the city. I mean, you have to understand, this is absolutely a 180 from what any kind of a leader would do when they come into a city. When, when conquering kings and leaders come in, they don't come in gently riding on the back of a colt. They come in with a horse and they come in with their armies and their entourage and they take dominion and they take authority and they demonstrate how powerful they are to seize the moment. This is what I love about Jesus. King of kings, Lord of lords, God Almighty who chose to come into the earth. Listen, he wasn't worried about what was happening because he knew why he came and he knew what was happening. But in the midst of it, the crowds begin to swell and the people begin to take their coats off and they begin to throw their coats out in front of Jesus. People ran and they began to pick up and they grabbed palm branches. That's why we call this Palm Sunday. And they began to run towards Jesus because there was something breaking loose of faith in their hearts. There was something that was saying to them, this is no ordinary man. This is the Messiah. This is the promised one. And here they knew the stories of Zechariah. They knew some of the signs of the Messiah. And one of them was, he shall come gently into the city riding on a colt. And it was a witness and a testimony in the hearts of people. And they began to sing. They began to dance. They began to celebrate. So much so that the religious leaders, the Pharisees, were outraged by this. And that's where they said to Jesus, they said, teacher, rebuke your disciples. In other words, they were saying, we recognize that what's happening here is these people are giving you worship. And only God alone can be worshiped. And Jesus is like, that's exactly what we're talking about. And they were like, this worship is reserved for the Messiah. And you know what Jesus' response is? Jesus said, if they are quiet, even the rocks will cry out. Boy, wouldn't you love to see that? Just the rocks just start opening up and start declaring the glory of God. I think about our friend Dick Foe, one of, a guy that I have asked many times to make room in his schedule to come and preach to you because he's one of the greatest, most incredible, loving men and incredible ambassador of the Lord. I hope someday we get Dick Foth here. But he used to be the, the president of Bethany Bible College uh, in, in Santa Cruz, California. And you know that area of the Bay Area has had some incredible earthquakes through, t through the, you know, the course of time. And Dick Foth talked about during one of those huge earthquakes that struck the, the, the Bay Area that he was driving in one of the windy, twisty roads. You ever been on those roads of Santa Cruz with the redwoods and the great big trees? And he said, in front of me, the road is, is just looking like it's bending. And, and he goes, and the trees are swaying. And these great, big, huge trees are banging into each other. And he says, I'm behind the wheel and I'm thinking to myself about how it says in Psalms that the trees of the fields will clap their hands. And he's like, I got to tell you something. When the trees are clapping their hands, that's not a good thing. You know, so, so Jesus says, look, if my disciples don't give me praise, watch out because even the rocks will open up and the rocks will praise me. I mean, how many of us have heard songs or sung songs? I'm not going to let no rock cry out in my place. You know, these are real things that Jesus said in this moment and he was affirming who he was he was revealing that he was the Messiah he was the one the only one worthy of worship and praise and he wasn't going to lay that down for the attacks of the Pharisees because he was taking a journey that's going to be what we know as the week of the passion and it's going to culminate where it looks like the enemy wins it's going to look like man uh, defeats Jesus when he goes to the cross but the truth is That cross was why Jesus even came into the earth, to purposely lay his life down, to be an atoning sacrifice that would bridge the gap between you and me as sinful people. The Bible says all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and the righteousness and the purity and the holiness of God the Father. The only way that we can get to heaven It's not by our good deeds. It's not even by our charitable giving or any of these other things. The only thing that can make us right in the eyes of a holy God is that Jesus himself came and shouldered the burden that we could not carry for ourselves. And Jesus came with purpose. Come on, church. He came with purpose. 
And it was to pay a price that would open a door. Today, some of us are feeling that place of being depleted, that place of being drained, that place of just needing to be able to get our breath and be able to understand that God has something more than waves of destruction. He has waves of mercy, waves of hope, waves of grace for our lives. There's such an amazing thing that God wants us to get a hold of. And then I I want you to see something else. Because every time I go down that that place of the Palm Sunday Road, I, I think about this part right here. I think about what happened when Jesus, as a very real person, stood. This is what you need to realize about the Bible. These are real places, real times, and real experiences that Christ had and the people that were with him. And there, coming into the city of Jerusalem, Jesus, look what it says. If, if, I tell, if, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. And as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, what happened? He wept over it. And he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. How many people around us today is this scripture true to? They're struggling with their lives. They're struggling. How do we raise our kids? What's the right thing to do if our kids are, are struggling, if our kids are, are uncertain? You know, do we let them raise themselves or do we parent them? Do we lead them? What's our, what are we supposed to do? And we, we're in a place where our social media and our corporations you know, are, are, are trend movers and people are left to believe that if you don't go along and if you don't, if you don't agree with everything, then you're going to lose a job or lose a position or lose an opportunity or you're going to be labeled and you're going to be seen as being out of touch. And yet, as we just continue to go down this road, we're walking in these places of despair and these places of discouragement. You know, I, I mentioned this just a little bit the other day. I, I left my phone down on the, on the, on the chair, but I was going to bring it with me. But the, one of the big questions today is, what is being lost because of our phones? What is being lost in our lives because we are so glued to our phones? I mean, even in myself, I, I have to just, you know, look at this. Because, you know, we just had a few days with our grandkids and, and my daughter and her husband. And yet, as we were there waiting for a meal, we were waiting to be served, I looked, and there, we're, we're on our phones. And I'm like, what are we doing on our phones? We put our phones down. We're like, we gotta, we got to get back to the things where our focus should be. I'm concerned because of what I'm hearing about our young people. How, what a huge percentage surveys are showing of young men who have decided that they have no idea, no, no desire to go into a relationship or, or to get married or to have a family and to build the future. I mean, it's unbelievable. And it, it's because of the phone, they say. Because of these dating apps. There's, there's this, this unwillingness to commit to anything. Because it's always like, oh, there's another person I could check out. There's another person. There's another opportunity. There's another, there's another, there's another. And this aspect that you have to take your eyes off of the screen to see the things that are right in front of you. God has divine appointments. He's got people to bring into your life. What if you're missing the person that God designed to be in your life, to be a blessing? Is there anybody here today? Have you ever heard of love at first sight? You know, if you're going to have love at first sight, you've got to get your eyes off the screen and start to look at the people. If you're going to dream dreams, you've got to stop looking at the things that are somebody else's fantasy. And you've got to start looking at what God is trying to say to you. Dial your hearts into the things that are with in front of you. Listen, what does Jesus say? Oh, if you could have only seen. The, if you could have only understood what would bring you peace while it was right in front of you. I have to ask you this. While God is stirring in the nations right now. Are you seeking to be a part of that? Are you putting down the distractions, whether it's a phone or a relation, whatever it is that's holding you back? I'm saying to you today, there are answers for your life. There is hope for your life. There's a God that cares for you, that loves you, that came out of heaven to bridge you to himself. And I'm saying to you today, don't miss what God has because you are distracted 
by the things that have nothing to offer to you. People worried about AI, people worried about climate change. Listen, the number one thing we should be concerned about is our, is our heart right with God? Are we leaning into him? What about this week? What could God do in our life this week? When was the last time you had an opportunity to share your faith with someone? What was the last time that, that you spoke hope into somebody's life? Let me tell you, if you will pray, God will open that door. If you'll ask to be used, there's so many places to be used. Get over this. The devil tries to say to you, people are not interested or people are gonna reject you. Just look, it's everywhere. It's just rejection and cancel and all these other things. Yeah, that's what's on the surface. But what's right below the surface are people trying somehow to find hope in their life, trying to find answers that they don't have. And it's hidden, shielded sometimes by a screen, sometimes by a title. But I want you to know there's a work going on today in the world. The Redeemer lives. He's coming again. You can trust him. And if he's going to take note to come into the city riding on a colt that's never been ridden before, you better know he's going to fulfill the big things as well. King of kings, Lord of lords. Yeah, there is a day coming when he's going to show his power. But that's coming in the book of Revelation at the end of these days of tribulation when he comes on a white horse with his armies of heaven. When he came into Jerusalem, he came in with a cult and a, a band of worshipers. Why were they worshiping? We read it. They were worshiping because of all the miracles that they had seen. Do you realize just before coming in the city of Jerusalem, Jesus had raised Lazarus from the dead, and that was just miles away. There was an entourage of people that saw Lazarus die, mourned him, and they saw him come to life. And then Jesus healed a man with blind eyes. And, you know, this was just adding to what he was doing. And so the people began, there was something stirring. They began to throw their coats. They began to take their palm branches. And they began to proclaim with loud voices, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And when they were even declaring Hosanna, Hosanna, it goes all the way back in the book of Psalms 118 and some of the other areas about the, the feast of Israel and the, the, the waters would be poured out in the temple as they would celebrate their different uh, rituals. And people would then take their palm branches inside of the, of the temple. And when they were waving those palm branches, they were saying, Hosanna, what does it mean? Save us, save us, save us now. Isn't it amazing when Jesus came in on the back of a colt demonstrating he was the Messiah? What were the people declaring? What were they shouting? They were shouting, Messiah, save us, save us now. Isn't that amazing? And yet there were people in that moment who were experiencing who Jesus was and their lives would never be the same. But there were others who were caught up in the moment. There were others who were right there and God was revealing himself to them at the same level. But later in the week, some of those very same people that pulled their coats off and threw it on the ground to celebrate Jesus, cried out to Pilate that he would crucify this Jesus. What am I saying to you today, church? The most important decision you'll ever make in your life is not even who you will marry, what university you'll go to, what career path you'll take off in. The most important decision you will ever make in your life is what do you choose to believe about Jesus Christ? Is he who the scripture says he is? And if so, what will you do with the name of Jesus? Will you miss the coming of the Lord in your life? Do you know you can miss it? Jesus said that about the people in Jerusalem, and he wept over them. I've got to tell you, the Lord weeps over our lives when we are missing what he has designed us to be and the relationship that he has purchased that we could have. Today, can I say it to you as your pastor? Don't miss the goodness of God for you. Don't miss his love for you. Don't miss forgiveness. 
Don't miss mercy. Don't miss eternal life. Don't get your eyes on the enemy of your soul. Center your life on the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Make a decision to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will believe Him. We will trust Him. I told you that I found a channel on XM Radio. It's a Billy Graham channel. So I, I listen to him all the time, coming and going. Anytime I'm in my truck, I've got Bill preaching the Word. And you know, it's kind of amazing because over and over, you know what he says? You must repent of your sin. You must believe in your heart. And then you need to start to obey what God says. It's pretty good, isn't it? Repent means to turn, go not your direction, but God's direction. How many know our culture is on a selfish direction? Man, I could, re- I could preach another sermon for you right now. Another, maybe two or three. Because the Bible says in the last days, people will be lovers of themselves. What are we famous for right now? We're lovers of the selfie because we're such lovers of ourself. Wow. I mean, it's just over and over in front of us. But what's even more powerful is the Word of God. Rivers of living water, blessing, authority, goodness. That's who our God is. But you got to make a choice. you got to make a choice. Where are you putting your faith? If the Lord were to come before this sermon ends in just a couple minutes, where would you stand? Would you, would you be ready for him? Or would you miss the coming of the Lord in your life? What box are you checking? You know what? I'm, I'm going to bank on the news media. I'm, I'm going to bank on the company that pays my paycheck. I'm going to bank on what my friends say. Or will you put your hope and your faith in the hands of a living God? What's it going to be? What's it going to be? Honestly, in your heart right now, if today was the day, are you ready for that day? Or would you miss the coming of the Lord because you've got your eyes on something else that takes your attention instead of the King of glory? Would you bow your heads with me for a moment? I believe there's something really powerful happening in in this room and online right now that God is just giving you a measure of faith to put your heart right with God and to let the Lord make you make you right I'm just going to tell you what Billy Graham would say you got to repent you've got to make a choice you got to say Lord I turn away from myself and I turn towards Jesus and I believe I ask you Lord to come into my life and forgive me And I ask you to cleanse me. And I ask you to take control of me. And then, God, I'm choosing that from this day on, I'm redirecting my heart that I would obey what you have called me to believe. And I'm going to obey what you have called me to live. I'm choosing you, Lord. I do not want to miss you. I don't want to miss the coming of the Lord in my life. If that's you today and you're just uncertain about are you right with God or not? Maybe you're a prodigal and there's just some decisions and choices that have left you far from where you want to be. Or maybe this is the first time that someone has ever confronted you with the reality that there's a decision that needs to be made in every human heart. Whatever it is. Today, if you just need confidence, if you need to know that you're right with Jesus... I want to just pray that prayer with you today. Would you, would you let me in on that today? Would you, just, would you be bold enough to just raise a hand and say, Pastor, pray for me because I want confidence. I want to know that I am not going to miss the coming of the Lord in my life, but that, I'm, that my heart is right. Okay, I see some hands going up. Anybody else just want to get underneath this prayer? Yes. Okay, young people, adults, yes. Anybody else right now just, I want to be sure of, what, of where my heart's at. I want to make my heart right with God. Anybody else right now, just lift it up. You know, don't be intimidated. Don't be ashamed or afraid. It doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means the right thing is happening with you. This is eternal that's happening with you right now. Yes. 
All right, numbers of people all over this building. I'm going to pray with you right now. Let's pray that prayer. Lord, from your own heart, just say it to the Lord. Lord, we repent. We come before you today and we just recognize that you're speaking. That God, there's something inside of our hearts that is drawing us to you. And Lord, I, I just want to choose today. I ask you, God, to forgive me of my sin. I turn my heart away from what, I, what my selfish life centers on. And I turn towards you to be the Lord of my life. I choose to believe on the Lord Jesus. I choose to believe that you are who you say you are and that you are going to do what you said you will do. You are going to come back. You, you have a place in heaven for us that with that place of, of choosing you, God, you are becoming, you're making us born again. You are making us spiritually alive. And I receive that today. I believe on you. And then, Lord, I choose today. Help me to begin to follow you in obedience. Help me, God, to be able to make the decisions in my life that you would choose for me to walk in. Let this be a great turning point in my life. And Lord, I pray for you to begin to replace the waves of fear and anxiety and depletion with waves of mercy and waves of grace, rivers of living water, God, that will fill and refresh my soul. And Lord, I pray today for people all over this room that you will light a fresh passion inside of our hearts. Give us a passion for our neighbors, for our, our loved ones. Lord, I pray that this week we would journey with you and you would do amazing things in our lives. Lord, I pray for our family in West Seattle, decisions being made right now in West Seattle. Lord God, for people online making decisions to follow Christ. Lord, let this be the day of our salvation. And we ask it together in Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me all across the building? And we're gonna, we're gonna just worship the Lord. I'm gonna invite our prayer team. We're going we're gonna to sing a, one last closeout song today. And prayer team, if you'll just kind of pace yourself uh, after we just sing this a little bit, come forward and please make yourself available. And church, so many of you raised a hand today. Our team would love to take two minutes to pray with you. We have a packet for you. And it's about taking the next step of faith. And, and we want to be here for you. This is what it's all about. And, and it's the heart and soul of what it is to follow Jesus. So we want you to be a part of that. And thank you today for your open and receptive hearts. Let's get ready for what God's going to do. Let's sing this song of praise, and then our prayer team is going to come. And even the rocks cry out, oh, I'll cry out. Heaven and earth will sing, so I'll sing. So I'll cry out, heaven and earth will sing, so I'll sing.
would love to partner with you in 